In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about different tools, gear, and items that I've accumulated over the last year or two that I really enjoy, especially as we're getting ready towards the gift-giving holiday season. I thought this could be a helpful one for you guys. I was gonna make an unboxing video, and I thought, man, I've got a lot of stuff that I haven't unboxed on camera. So sit back, relax, get some ideas as it relates to Christmas gifts. Here we go. I'm gonna try and go lowest to highest as it relates to price point and also include links descriptions below as well as some prices for US uh, overlaid on top. Now, I am not making any money out of these links. This is just me trying to share with you some of the things I enjoy. The first and cheapest is just a valve cap. So this is just a rubber valve cap that instead of having to unscrew, you can just pull on and off easily when you're going to check tire pressure. I'm usually doing this before every single ride and every single time I use them, I'm glad I have them because they are so simple and easy to take off. I know it only takes a couple more seconds to screw them on and off, but still, I do enjoy these a lot. Next, we have just a simple phone pouch, a little bit of carrying protection if you're putting your phone in your backpack or even in your pocket. Um, this one doesn't quite fit my daughter's phone, which is fairly big with this case, but it holds my phone just fine. The only problem is I'm filming with it. So just a simple device, a little more protection for your phone when you slip it into your backpack. We just got a simple hex key wrench set. Uh, if you guys do not have one of these sets, I do really enjoy them. Previously, I'd mostly been using these or one of these, but for the amount of money, these are very helpful. I just put some different color tape on the most common ones that I'm using, and that definitely helps me locate them. Next up is just going to be a low pressure tire gauge. I do really like these because they're way more accurate than a larger one, and this has just been really helpful to me. This camera tripod mount I have found to be very helpful as it relates to filming out in the woods. The flexible legs can just bend around a tree branch. Um, it folds out. This ball joint can be very helpful to get the right angle. And then this actually folds up and this way. So now you can go ahead and clamp your phone into there. You just put your phone in there with the built-in spring that is uh, right there. The ball joint allows the camera angle when you've got it attached to a tree to still be vertical. And uh, this is just a nice unit. Found that it does not break. It is pretty uh, reliable, sturdy compared to the others that I've had. Oh, and it also has a uh, mount so you can put a GoPro or different DSLR type cameras on there as well as a level. I do enjoy this rake. You may have seen me talk about it before, but in the fall, as the leaves are out, I can actually put this into my backpack and then take it out into the woods and expand it. And it becomes a full-size rake, which is handy uh, in order to get rid of leaves and debris so that I can more accurately ride and not slip. I know it helps to ride in slippery conditions, but sometimes there's things underneath the leaves that make it even harder. So this is helpful. Let's talk for just a moment about bar risers. So this particular product I've already mounted onto both of my bikes. And these are a 20 mil bar riser for a one and an eighth inch bar, which is your typical trials width bar. A lot of people do not like bar risers because they might even say, oh, they mess up the geometry of the bike. They do make it a little bit higher. I am 6'6", and these were very helpful. I rode for two and a half years without them and realized, you know what? I'm gonna give these a try, and I do like them. It puts more weight back onto my pegs instead of over onto my hands, and this has just been a good $25 investment. You can give it a try. If you don't like it, fine, but if they help you and they make it more comfortable to ride, I say give it a shot. As the weather's getting colder, I do like a little bit of a thicker glove. These are from 100%, I believe they're called a brisker glove. I got these on Rocky Mountain ATV and they have a touchscreen so you can still get a hold of your phone and just a thicker material in order to not have your hands get quite as cold during the winter season. The knee pads that I use are from Alpine Stars. For the money, these are a great value, go all the way around, protect my shin as well. My boot comes up to right about here, but super easy to get on and off. Um, they don't have another strap above the knee. So as you bend your knee, they will kind of come out just a little bit, but usually I'm wearing these under pants and as it relates to knee pads, sometimes that little bit of Velcro can get stuck under the pants. So I do have these um, like compression sleeves that go over, so I put, the shin guards on, put these on, and then that way the pants don't get hung up on any of that Velcro that will typically stick to it. So these are a nice item as well. This one's pretty simple. It's just a boot dryer. So if you guys do not have one of these, especially after a wet trial or washing your boots, if you want to ride later, just goes on simply like that. And it's just warm air. There's no fan. It's just heat that's coming up through there and it dries the boots definitely overnight and sometimes even faster. All right, next up is going to be this handheld air compressor. These are really handy just to top off tire pressure. This does work in my car, my truck as well, but it, it's a struggle to blow it all the way up from flat, but definitely great to top off uh, the trials tires or anything else. You can see you get a few different attachments and you can see how the battery's going as well as a light. So very handy. Uh. 
and it does have an auto off so that once it's all the way to the pressure that you designated in the front, it just shuts off. All right, the next one's just a digital torque wrench. I do have the typical style that just clicks, and I like this, but when I'm going really small, not wanting to over torque something, uh, a digital one is handy. It does take it a moment just to program in the uh, spec that you need, but as you guys can see, as you get closer, it starts to beep a little bit. It's letting you know you're close, and then that's fully torqued. This is the back protector from Jitsi. You guys can see this is actually pretty thick. Um, it is great for protecting the spine. I did have one that had the chest protector built in as well as the back protector, but it was just too tight up on my neck. So I decided to go only with this, especially as you're doing more stuff on the back wheel. This one's helpful. A little easy to get in and out because of the side zipper that it has. It's gonna look a little bulky over this sweatshirt though. So nice breathable material through here. It does get fairly hot, especially in the back in the summertime, but nice kidney protection, and it's definitely great for protecting the spine. It's risk racing lights. I don't know how to pronounce this, sticker maybe, but these uh, tripod style lights are great for camping or a variety of different things. I've been using them to ride at night. So these little tension uh, tripod style lights. These are the cheapest ones and they're the easiest and lightest weight. So just turning them on, I believe this is like 800 lumens and um, you can see it's about seven feet tall. Really easy to set up, great light that it provides. There's different modes that you can put on here. These are LED rechargeable, so these lights are handy. I can just recharge them, and I believe they last for approximately three hours, three to four hours on full brightness, which is plenty of ride time. This model is a little bit more expensive. It does have little stakes that can go into the ground to secure it. The feet aren't quite as wide, and it also has a ball head joint here so you can adjust the direction, especially if you're planting this on a hill or something of that sort, that can be helpful. However, these ones are a little heavier. I bought two of the more expensive ones and two of the cheaper ones. This one is 1200 lumens. Uh, if I had to do it over again, I'd probably just get the cheaper ones. This one does go a little taller though, and it also has a nice aspect that you can take off the um, light up here. So here's the light. You can actually take it off. It's just a magnet up there. And so now you've actually got a light that you can use also as a flashlight. So that's pretty cool. Uh, they all go into these different color modes, red and white, but this one does have the flashlight and then the magnet so you could mount it onto a you know, workbench or something that you needed to shine a light. So this is, this is nice, it's helpful, it's just a little bit heavier. So when trying to take it out into uh, a practice area, I do like the simplicity of the cheaper ones. I got four of these and they really help for riding in the dark and still being able to train, especially as daylight savings time and the winter is coming on. All right, next up is going to be this chainsaw. I believe this is a Ting Menti. This is just a small handheld battery operated chainsaw, which uh, when going to clear sections, especially I was riding with Sam up in the woods, this was really helpful as we got into some new areas. It's got a little bit of a light on there. It's got two batteries that it comes with. So as you run out of one battery, I have not had that problem at all, but it's nice to have something I can put into the backpack and still be able to go ride and clear small saplings. I'd say I've cut branches that were maybe four inches around with this, but I wouldn't want to do much bigger, but definitely handy tool to have. Uh, this tool cart I recently got just because as I was doing jobs like handlebars or anything, I wanted to have my tools right next to me rather than over on the workbench. This thing rolls. It's got plenty of spots to put tools. Got a nice padded section here, little drawer and some different levels as you guys can see. But this tool cart has actually been really handy uh, just to be able to work close on the bike and not have to worry about going back over there to get some tools. So I do like a rolling tool cart, gets things right where I need them to be. And speaking of setups as it relates to maintenance, this bike stand from Rocky Mountain ATV, I really do enjoy. Um, this is great for servicing linkage or doing any work down low. Instead of having to you know, bend way over or lay down on the ground, I can really jack the bike up pretty high. I'll go ahead and include the specs down below as it relates to how high it can go. As you guys can see, this stand goes nice and high, gets the bike way up there so I can easily work on things down here, service the linkage. It does have a safety bar that you can slip in in order to be confident knowing that this whole thing's not going to collapse on you. Uh, it does have a security method to keep the pegs anchored down. I feel like for a trials bike, the pegs are a little bit too far back and so I did have to put a little ring in here as an extender, but it lifts up to, I believe, 300 pounds is a great uh, convenient way to move a bike around in the shop so once the bike's in the air I can push it out of the way especially if I'm not wanting to work on it or do whatever I like that it's got wheels it's also got brakes on there and this is just a really really nice way to be able to service the bike and not have to get down on the ground all the time 
Hey, and if you made it this far, thanks so much for your support and for watching. Hopefully you guys have found some ideas as it relates to gifts. If you're anything like me, your wife or your spouse, someone might ask you, hey, what do you want this year for Christmas? And you're like, I don't know. So hopefully this one gave you some ideas. If you do wanna see a full review on any of these products, let me know, drop a comment below and I can try and add a little bit more as it relates to the context and how I use it, especially the lights. I wanna go ahead and show you those in a little more detail in a video to come. Thanks so much for watching.